day all over the world. Today the world celebrates Mother's Day and rightly so. And so today's message focuses on motherhood and the joys and the challenges of motherhood. Our text for meditation is 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, the Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Today's message is entitled, A Mother's Influence. A Mother's Influence. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will overshadow us now as we focus on your word at this time. In Jesus' name, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, generally, we would forget perhaps the arithmetic that we learnt in primary or secondary school. We would forget some of it we would probably forget how to spell some words but we will always remember what our mothers did to us or what she did for us unto our dying day ladies and gentlemen the sphere of the mother may be humble but her influence united with that of the father is as abiding as eternity Next to God, the mother's power for good is the strongest known on earth. The mother's influence is an unceasing influence, and if it is always on the side of right, her children's characters will testify to her moral earnestness and worth. Her smile, her encouragement may be an inspiring force. She may bring sunshine to the heart of her child by a word of love, by a smile of approval, by a touch, a hand on the shoulder. Today we will look at two examples which remind us of the influence of a mother on her offsprings. Two examples. The first example is the example and influence of Timothy's mother on his life. The Bible records the Apostle Paul speaking. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Paul is speaking of Timothy. The word Timothy, 
Timotheos in the Greek means one who reverences God, one who worships God, one who honors God. What a wonderful name. Timothy was a convert and a traveling companion and an assistant to the Apostle Paul. Timothy is mentioned first in connection with Paul's visit to Lystra on his second missionary journey around AD 49. Timothy was already a Christian then, according to Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. Apparently, Timothy and members of his family had been converted through the Apostle Paul's ministry upon the occasion of Paul's first visit to that city. According to Acts 14 verse 8 to 18, cross-referencing that text to 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 2 and 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 1 and 5. Timothy was half Jewish. His mother was a Jewess, but his father was a Greek, according to Acts 61. So, Timothy's mother was a Jew, and his father was a Greek or a non-Jew. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 evinces a very vivid and powerful example of a mother's influence. The Apostle Paul says of Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Paul emphasizes the influence of these Christian women because Timothy's father died when his son was a lad and his father was a Greek and thus perhaps indifferent to the true God because the Greek worshipped pantheons of common G-O-D-S. Now the question of how mothers can influence their children's behavior has been the subject of much research. The question of how mothers influence their children's behavior has been the subject of much research. For example, researchers from the University of Missouri, Columbia, have found that mothers' relationships can influence adolescent children's relationships with their friends, particularly negative and antagonistic relationships that they would have witnessed their parents being involved in. Two individuals, one Gary Glick and Amanda Rose, professor in the Department of Psychological Sciences at the University of Missouri, studied the development of friendships and other peer relationships during adolescence and their impact on psychological adjustment. They found, they found that adolescents may mimic may mimic the negative characteristics of their mother's relationships in their own peer-to-peer -peer friendships which suggested that mothers can serve as role models for their adolescents during the formative years in other words they found that mothers who display high levels of conflict with friends with their friends may signal to their children that such behavior is acceptable or even normative in friendships. In other words, if the children see their parents, their mothers, as we say colloquially, abusing their friends, then they might think, the adolescent and the children, that cussing out their young friends is okay. Mothers' relationships can influence adolescent children's relationships. Another study which came to the fore on March 29, 2010 from the University of Reading in the United Kingdom found that children, especially boys, who have insecure attachment to their mothers in the early years have more behavioral problems later in childhood. More specifically, and repeating it again, the analysis showed that children with insecure attachment to their mothers 
particularly boys, had significantly more behavioral problems even when the behavioral problems were measured years later. Years later, they were still being influenced by insecure attachments to their mothers. Another research conducted by Case Western Reserve University and which was highlighted on June 17, 2013 showed that aggression in school aged children may have its origins in children three years old and older who witnessed violence between their mothers and their partners. It is said that between 3 and 10 million children witness some form of domestic violence each year in the United States. And research has shown that aggressive behavior in children is a result of the influence on the violence seen between their parents observed during the younger years of the children. You know, people think that children that young, three years, are passive and unaware, but children pay attention to what is happening around them, said one professor of social work. People may think children that young are passive and unaware, but children pay attention to what is happening around them and what they observe and witness influence them in life and sometimes throughout their lives. So mothers do have an influence on their offsprings. They can have a positive influence or they can have a negative influence. But thank God we have Infimity's mother, one who had a positive influence on her child. These three points help us to see that her influence on Timothy's life was positive. Number one, Timothy's mother taught him the Word of God. Timothy's mother taught him the Word of God. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 states of Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Faithful Jewish parents begin teaching the truths of the Old Testament to their children at five years of age. And Timothy's mother followed the counsel of the Old Testament scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 to 7 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou sittest down, and when thou risest up. God says, teach them to your children. The instructions in the word, teach them to your children continually. For you see, friend of mine, the essential purpose of the Bible is not merely to record history, nor even to describe the nature of God. The Bible was written to show men how they may be saved from their sins. You see, there are many so-called sacred writings in the world, but only the Bible safely points the way to man's redemption and freedom and deliverance from sin. Hear the preacher. The great world religions, and I say this kindly, the great world religions such as Islam and Buddhism and Hinduism, they too have holy scriptures, but they cannot make anyone wise unto salvation. 
Only the Bible reveals how mankind may break the bonds of sinful habits and find pardon from God. Therefore, man's first duty should be to understand the Bible for himself. To understand what God is saying to him in the Word. But mind you, even though a man may commit the scriptures to memory and master every doctrine, this itself does not ensure his salvation. For the Bible says the devils also believe, but their knowledge of truth does not make them saints, nor does it guarantee them future redemption. So it must be more than just a mental appreciation of the scriptures. In other words, friend of mine, the knowledge of God's word must develop and cause us to exercise faith in God when we read about God in the Bible. The knowledge of God's word must develop faith in us and cause us to exercise faith in the God we read about in the Bible. And so the godliness that Timothy saw in his home life was sound and sensible. Timothy saw in his home life an evidence of conversion, what the Bible was doing, what the Bible did for his parents, his mother especially, and grandmother. The faith of his mother and his grandmother in the sacred oracles was to him a constant reminder of the blessing in doing God's will. The word of God was the rule by which these two godly women had guided Timothy. And the spiritual power of the lessons that he had received from them kept him pure in speech and unsullied by the evil influences with which he was surrounded. And so, thus, his home instructors had cooperated with God in preparing him to bear the burdens of life. Friend of mine, God's word builds us up. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 states, And now, brethren, Paul speaking, I commend you to God, and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them who are sanctified God's word build us up therefore parents parents are to teach children lessons from the Bible making them so simple that they can be readily understood in other words, mothers teach your children that the commandments of God must become the rule of their lives. Teach your children that the commandments of God must become the rule of their lives. Now circumstances may occur which may separate your children from you, from their parents, from their homes, but the lessons of instruction given to them in childhood and youth will be a blessing to them throughout their lifetime because you might not be able always to watch over them they may have to leave home like what happens in, in the Rupununi and they have to come from some village far away to the secondary school and have to live in the dormitory in St. Ignatius or they may leave home to attend CPC and they might live in the dorm or they might join the police force and have to come to a training school in Georgetown but if you train them well and instruct them in the ways of God, those instructions under God will guide them even when you cannot see them. The Guyana Chronicle reported on May 3rd, 2016, I quote, 20-year-old Kevin Christopher Balcaran was Tuesday found guilty and sentenced to four months imprisonment for assaulting his mother. Balkaran of Houston Housing Scheme East Bank Demerara is a frequent visitor to the courts for threatening to kill his mother, Yusha Balkaran. Another article, April 23rd, 2016, 
Guiana Chronicle reported Terence Mandry, 53, called throwback, is in police custody after allegedly confessing to killing his 75 year old mother, Cecilia Madre, called Susie. Now, perhaps if Kevin Balcaran and Terence Mandre had adopted and lived by the principles of the Ten Commandments through the power of the Holy Ghost, they would not be in jail today. For the fifth command says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And the sixth command says, Thou shalt not kill. So if they had lived by the principles of the Ten Commandments, by the power of the Holy Spirit, those principles would have guided their lives. And they may be upset at some things mom did, but they would not be threatening to kill her or kill her. That's why we say that the Bible, the Word of God, is the only sacred book that shows the human race the way to salvation, the way to deliverance from the bondage of sin. Only the Word of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit in Kevin's life and Mandre's life, could have delivered them from that passion of hate and anger that could have led to murder. that led to murder. Mothers today must teach children the Word of God. Start with simple things, the creation story, the Lord's Prayer, the Beatitudes, the Psalms. Psalm 1, for example. You know, some mothers teach their children. They're more eager to teach them how to dance and how to dress and how to look nice than to teach them the word of God and to repeat scriptures. Dress them up nice, look what she does. Dance them, mommy, see? Dance and that is. Teach them about God. That would do better for them than learning how to dance. Remember parents, God's word will build up your child and will cause your child to develop harmoniously. So firstly, Timothy's mother taught him the Word of God. Secondly, through his mother's influence, Timothy got an example of unfeigned faith. Unfeigned faith. The Apostle Paul says of Timothy, our text again, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, or some people say Louis, Louis and thy mother Eunice, some people say Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. The sincere faith of his grandmother and mother was instilled in Timothy from his earliest years. However, the faith of his ancestors would not be saving faith for Timothy unless he accepts Christ himself. You see, second and third generation church members cannot trust to mere acquaintance with the gospel for their salvation. It must become a personal faith which brings them courage and peace from day to day. In other words, they must be able to say, like the blind man who was healed in John chapter 9, I don't know what you think about Jesus. Whether you think he's a prophet or a good man or not, I don't know. But what I know is that once I was blind, but now I see, I have experienced his healing power. And so, mom may have her relationship with Jesus and dad may have his, but God blesses the child who's got his own. Who could say like Paul, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day until the day I see him face to face. Timothy developed a personal faith in Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The Apostle Paul commented on Timothy's unfeigned faith. What does unfeigned mean? Mean. Unfeigned means not feigned, not counterfeit, 
It means without pretense, not play acting, not hypocritical. It's real. His faith was real. So we can talk about an unfeigned piety to God or unfeigned love to our fellow men. You know, the Bible says clearly that God is displeased with hypocrisy. God is displeased with hypocrisy. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus spoke some very strong words to the Pharisees concerning their hypocrisy. Jesus told them in Matthew chapter 23, for example, verse 13, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Why? For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer them that are entering to go in. You're stuck at the door, preventing others from going in. He says to them in verse 14 of chapter 23 of Matthew, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Why? For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Verse 27 and 28, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Why? For ye are like unto white, whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also appear outwardly righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. God hates hypocrisy. Like preachers who would quietly stay home on Saturday, the seventh day, and observe the Sabbath day, and then go out and function on Sunday in their churches. That is hypocrisy. If it is true, embrace it. Call your congregation together and say, Members, the Bible says the seventh day, Saturday, is the Sabbath. By the grace of God, we, are, we will be observing Sabbath from today. But you don't go home and keep it quietly and then come and present Sunday to the people. Number three. Because of his mother's influence, Timothy learned not to be ashamed of his tender, caring emotions. Because of his mother's influence and training, Timothy learned not to be ashamed of his tender, caring emotions. The name of Jesus, that sweet name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there is life today. The name of Jesus, that sweet name.